Hello everybody and welcome to the channel, it's Polyester here, and today the disconnect penalties went live. Um, it was a rather subdued post, but it does exist here on the Dead by Daylight Discord server. I don't believe they announced anything about it on Twitter. Let me just double check really quick. Dead by Daylight on Twitter here. I don't see any notification about the disconnect test on the Twitter. So what it says here is uh, the disconnect penalty feature is now enabled for a test on PC and the Nintendo Switch. This new system discourages players from disconnecting excessively by preventing them from queuing for another match for a set amount of time. The length of this timeout escalates for each time the player disconnects. This timer decays over time only if the player does not continue to disconnect. The test started on Tuesday, December the 17th at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and it will end on Thursday, December the 19th at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We will be monitoring the system over the course of the test in case of emergency. So this part about it says the timer decays over time only if the player does not continue to disconnect. So there must be a period of time where you have to have a clean slate with no disconnects for it to reset. Let's say it's an imaginary 24 hours. They haven't told us exactly because they probably don't want people to game the system. But let's say I disconnect and I get penalized and I serve my penalty time then I would have to not disconnect for another 24 hours to get another disconnect at the first penalty level. Again, the 24 hours is just an imaginary number I'm coming up with from my head. It may not be that long or that short. It is unknown. And just to backtrack for a second here, you may say, well, why is the test only on PC and the Nintendo Switch of all places? It's because these platforms have the dedicated servers. Dedicated servers do not exist on the PS4 or the Xbox yet. They're still in the testing phase. They're fine tuning it. I think the dedicated servers are much better than they were initially, but they're not ready to roll them out to all platforms. And the dedicated servers are necessary to um, detect who is doing the disconnecting and apply these penalties properly. Now you may say, well, why the switch of all places? Well, this Nintendo Switch specifically needed to have dedicated servers to run the game because their game engine wasn't powerful enough to have the host, the killer be the host, and support the game. So they had to have dedicated servers on the Switch to go forward and run the game at all. The Nintendo Switch has been exclusively on dedicated servers since its launch in late September. Dead by Daylight is having a live Q&A session tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Twitch, which they may uh, talk about this disconnect penalty. I don't know how much of this they want to lay out for everyone, again, because they don't want to tell people exactly what's going on so that they can game the system, but I'm going to give you some information that I have found on the internet about how the disconnect penalties work. So from what I've seen on the forums, the uh, disconnect time bands go as follows. Your first disconnect, you will have to serve a one minute penalty before you can search for another match. Not bad, right? So if you get a bug where you get stuck on something for some reason and you have no choice but to disconnect, it's one minute, not a big deal. If you disconnect a second time, then your penalty will be five minutes. If you disconnect a third time, then your penalty will be 15 minutes. If you disconnect a fourth time, your penalty will be 30 minutes that you'll have to wait out that clock before you can search for another match. And then a fifth time is unknown. I haven't tested this myself. This is just what I've uh, seen on the forums. Uh, as far as I know, it's accurate. I know the first two are accurate because I had another Fog Whisperer tell me that she received the 60 second penalty. And then uh, three or four hours later, she had her game freeze and that counted as a disconnect. So she had to serve a five minute penalty. Now that brings us to the point where some people have asked if my game crashes or if um, I'm randomly disconnected from a match, is that going to count against me? Apparently the answer is yes. While I know that isn't going to be a popular answer, I believe the reason why they have to do it this way is if they made it so that if you suddenly lost connection and you didn't actually hit leave game in the game, count as a disconnect, then you just have people pulling the cord uh, to circumvent penalties. So it looks like they have to make it that 
any dropping out of a game for any reason will result in a penalty. Again, if you aren't abusing it and it's a one-time thing per day, it's only going to be a minute. So that shouldn't be a big deal to anyone. Even two a day. If it's happening to you two a day where you have bad internet, five minutes isn't terrible. It's only to the point where you start getting to, to the 15 minutes, 30 minutes, possibly a fifth time in um, before your timer has decayed might result in an hour timeout. Not sure. So this seems to be the framework for the disconnect penalties. And I know that people have a lot of different opinions about this and you know nobody has to accept my opinion on it by any means, but I think this is a good thing. I know there's people out there who think that this is gonna make it harder to get matches because so many people are gonna be disconnected and sending out time penalties. But I personally don't agree. I guess we'll see what happens. And then I've had people say to me, well, this isn't gonna solve anything because then they're just gonna kill each other on the first hook. So I would just say, look, I think it's necessary to clean up the game. And I remember when I was first joining the game that if I was just now joining the game in the current state it is with playing with all these random people that I didn't know and watching them disconnect and hang me out and leave me high and dry all the time, I probably would not be where I am today. I would not have continued to play the game because I think that the disconnects sour the people who just want to stick it out so much that they end up quitting. So I know there's people who think that, oh, having to serve penalties is going to make people quit the game. But I think at the same time that there's probably a lot of people who have already been lost because of these DCs. And hopefully once the word gets out that there are DC penalties out there and that people have to stick it out, we can maybe win some of those people back. That's my hopes. I don't know what's gonna happen. We'll just all have to wait and find out together. But I know that whenever I played the game, and this is just my personal philosophy, nobody has to adopt what I did or do, but whenever I played the game as a random person with a, um, a group of randoms as a survivor, I always struggled as much as I could for my other teammates. I very rarely ever just gave up. And the reason why I did that is because even though I got caught, I always felt like it was my duty to my teammates, even though they were strangers who didn't know me and I didn't know them, it was my duty to do everything possible to help them survive, even if I couldn't. That was just my philosophy. Just the other day, I played a game where I got camped in the basement by an insidious Leatherface. And I didn't quit. I struggled as much as I could because I wanted to give the team as much time as possible to get things done while Bubba was hanging out with me in the basement. I waved my arms as much as I could. Now, I don't know what you do, but normally when I wave my arms, then that's like, come get me. But if I touch the hook, then that's my indication to let people know that something's up and I'm getting camped. So usually if I'm waving, I'm like, Come get me, come get me. But if I touch the hook, and I'm not trying to jump off, I just touch it and then I let go, that's my indicator that something's up and I'm being camped. I don't know what you guys do, but that's the way I try to communicate it to people. So while I was in the basement, I was touching the hook as much as possible to warn people something was up, and I still had an Ash come down and try and save me. And then he got caught, obviously. So at the end of the match, he said to me, well, why didn't you just let yourself die on the hook if you knew you were being camped? And the reason why I didn't do that is because as soon as I give up, that frees Leatherface to go and hunt down someone else. Now, inadvertently, it wound up getting the Ash killed because he came down to try and be the hero and save me. But if he had recognized my warnings of me touching the hook over and over and stayed away, he knew we were facing Leatherface then maybe he would have just done gens and got out. The other two people did gens and escaped. But if I give up, then that frees Bubba to go and chase someone else down and perhaps get them and do the same thing to them. So I always feel like it's my duty, my obligation, to take as much of the killer's time as possible whenever I'm being amped, just to give the other people a chance to escape. Have there been times where like I'm on a hook and my friend is on a hook and we're on comms and my friend says, you know what? I'm not feeling it. This is a loss. And we just both let go and move on to the next game. Sure. I've done that before. 
But for the majority of the time, I always try and struggle as much as possible because you know what? Life is a struggle. And if we just give up on something as simple as a video game because we don't want to stick it out because there's some adversity, then what ha hope do we have in life when things really get hard that matter? So I remember playing when I was brand new to the game. I didn't know anybody. I didn't have any friends. And I put myself out on the line and I saved people. And I made relationships with them because they appreciated that I came to get them. And I didn't leave them out to dry and, I, and they wanted to play with me. And we built relationships because they were struggling and they didn't give up. And I made it worthwhile for them to not give up and I saved them. And we built friendships and bonds. And if you quit, you don't get any of that. Like some of those people wanted to befriend me and we play together to this day. We got married. We raised a bunch of kids. Okay, I might be lying about that last part, but there are literally people who have met their significant other on this game of Dead by Daylight. And if you give up, you just don't have that opportunity if you just quit. So you can play it the way you want it, and I'm going to keep playing it the way that I think it should be played. But you aren't going to be able to DC anymore, it looks like, assuming this test goes well, without receiving some penalty for it. Does it suck to get tunneled? Does it suck to get camped? Sure. But I don't know what DCing solves in that. You might as well just take your points and go. I never understood the whole DCing thing. All you're doing is robbing your teammates of precious time in a game that is built around the currency of time to get things done. Similarly with killers, I never understood why killers are DCing at the end of games. Like, just take your points. If people, if all the survivors are running out the door, just stick around and take your points. There's an end game timer for crying out loud. It isn't going to be forever. Just take your points. I don't see the point in DCing. Anyway, that's the poly sermon over for the day. The DC penalty is being tested for the next couple of days. We'll see what comes of it and what the future holds, what Dead by Daylight actually gets out of the testing and decides what they're going to do with this system moving forward. But just know that if you play on PC or Switch, they will be monitoring your account the next couple of days. So watch your P's and Q's and take care of each other out there in the fog. We'll see you next time. Bye bye.